Welcome to the unit on HR measurement and audit. After completion of this session, you will be able to understand the concept, scope, benefits and process of human resource audit. Discuss the concept, types and benefits of benchmarking. There's a famous quote by Peter Drucker. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. This quote talks about the very philosophy behind HR measurement. HR professionals are being asked to prove the contribution of HR programs to an organization's bottom line. HR measurement focuses on communicating whether critical long-term people management strategies drive productivity and deliver a workforce necessary to achieve business goals. Good HR practices contribute to business outcomes. HR measurement can show the impact of HR practices on business performance. It is this contribution that will make HR a strategic partner. This is a crucial point because HR organizations that collect effectiveness data are more likely to be strategic partners. The five most often used systems to measure HR effectiveness include HR audit, benchmarking, HR accounting, human resource information system, and HR research. So let's start the discussion on HR audit. According to daily order, Personal audit refers to an examination and evaluation of policies, procedures and practices to determine the effectiveness of personal management. To take the discussion forward, HR audit is the process of evaluating the effectiveness of HR functions. It evaluates the HR activities in an organization with the intent of improving those activities. The goal is to identify problem spots and ways of improvement. The audit may include one division or entire company. HR audit may be total or partial. Partial covers few areas of HR, whereas total is a comprehensive audit system which covers almost all the areas of HR. It provides feedback about HR function to operating managers and HR specialists. It also provides feedback on how well managers are meeting their HR duties. In short, audit is an overall quality control check on HR activities. So the question is, why do we need to conduct an HR audit? The objectives of an HR audit include to conduct an independent, objective, systematic and critical review of HR functions. Second, to measure for deviations from standards and devise appropriate strategies and corrective actions. To check for alignment of HR functions and organizations overall practices and procedures to measure statutory compliances of HR activities as per law and other relevant labor policies. To explore areas for saving HR costs and expenses. After discussing the objectives, let's understand the benefits. The benefits of an HR audit include identifies HR contribution to organization. Second, it improves the professional image of the HR department as it encourages greater responsibility and professionalism among members of the HR department. It clarifies the HR department's duties and responsibilities. Stimulates uniformity of HR policies and practices. It helps to identify critical HR problems. Ensures timely compliance with legal requirements. And finally, 
It helps to reduce human resource cost through more effective HR procedures. We will now spend some time understanding the various approaches to HR audit. The various approaches include legal approach, functional approach and strategic approach. In a legal approach, the audit helps an organization to verify whether its policies, practices and documents regarding employee hiring, retention, discipline, termination and post-employment are both fair as well as legal. The legal approach centers on finding out if the company is complying with the current labor laws. The functional approach analyzes the application of different HR policies. It helps to study and analyze each one of the specific areas of human resource management. In this approach, first the areas to be studied are identified. Later, a list of indicators corresponding to the different areas of HR function is identified. These indicators can be quantitative, which includes numbers or ratios, or could be qualitative derived from the responses given by the people involved, such as management, employees or external experts. The various areas that could be studied under the functional audit include job analysis, human resource planning, recruitment and selection, training, performance management, compensation, working condition, career planning, and so on. Area specific indicators could be, for example, if the area is job analysis, the indicators could be the degree to which job descriptions have been updated. The second indicator could be the methods used to analyze and describe the jobs. The other area could be recruitment and selection. The indicators could be the number of days needed to fill a vacant post. The average cost of recruitment and selection per job post. The degree to which internal and external sources of recruitments are used. Another area could be training. The indicators could be the procedures followed and the frequency with which personal training needs are analyzed. The evaluation criteria to measure the effectiveness of the training programs. The average number of hours of training per employee. The third approach is the strategic approach. The first two approach that is legal and functional approach focuses on operational and tactical fields. The above two approaches do not evaluate if HRM supports or aids in the achievement of company's strategy. This is why the strategic approach has been developed as a means of determining if the HR function is a source of competitive advantage for the company. The strategic audit of HR helps to ensure that the HR program are aligned with the company's long-term objectives. In this way, the HR function becomes a source of competitive advantage. Let's move on and discuss the HR audit process. The steps involved in HR audit includes First, determine the objective of HR audit. Second, determine the scope. This step of an HR audit is to determine the scope of the audit, whether the audit would be total or partial. 
businesses may choose to conduct audit that focuses on specific hr areas such as payroll or record keeping or cover all the functions of hr the next step is to develop a plan for conducting the audit which includes assembling the audit team creating a timeline for completion of the audit and development of tools for data collection the next step is gather and analyze the data the audit team should gather all the applicable documents and forms under the scope of the audit they should also review current and potential legal actions audit methods such as questionnaire interview and observations can also be used data can be gathered from company records and discussions with employees the next step is to produce a report after all the necessary information has been analyzed the next step is to create a report with findings of the audit this report could identify strengths and weaknesses found during the audit as well as offer recommendations to correct any instances of non compliance the report could be either clean or qualified in the case of clean the performance is fairly satisfactory in the case of qualified hr performance gap is identified the next step involves create an action plan once the audit is complete company executive should meet with the audit team to discuss the findings and formulate a plan to address each problem or area of concern identified in the report action items may include changes to policy procedures and or training practices the final step is evaluate the progress once corrective measures have been implemented organization should continuously monitor and periodically review the new processes or procedures to ensure hr effectiveness so these are the steps involved in an hr audit we move on to discuss the second system in hr measurement that is benchmarking so what is benchmarking benchmarking is the continuous process of measuring products services and practices against the toughest competitors or those companies considered as business leaders benchmarking is a learning process to find better ways of doing things benchmarking can also be looked as a technique that uses quantitative or qualitative data to make comparisons between different organizations or different sections of organization a benchmarking process could start with the following probing questions how are we performing in comparison to others how can we improve what are others good at what can we learn from others and how can we be the best thus to summarize we can say that benchmarking is a continuous method of measuring and comparing a firm's processes against competitors or business leaders 
Why do we do that? We do that to identify performance gap between one's own processes and those of leading firms. It helps an organization to learn from leading firms and devise strategies to fill the gap and improve performance. GE, for example, had appointed a core team to study the management practices in some of the world's best managed firms to identify key processes for improving productivity. The team went on to devise a set of principles and processes to help GE become more productive. 1000 GE executives were trained through a course designed to pass on the best practices identified from the study of the best in the world to improve productivity. So why do we need to benchmark with best practices? Measuring with best practices is important because best practices are the cause of best performance. So let's discuss the benefits of HR benchmarking. HR ben benchmarking helps an organization to identify how its HR practices are in comparison with best practices. It helps organization to learn from others experience as to what are the practices that work and how it can be implemented successfully. They provide a basis for reviewing existing HR practices and developing new practices. They also help managers to establish a strategy and set priorities for HR practices. So some of the benchmarked performance measures which are commonly used in HR measurements include total compensation as a percentage of net income before taxes, percentage of management positions filled internally, rupee sales per employee, benefits as a percentage of payroll cost, employee turnover ratio, sales and production per employee. Now let's discuss the types of benchmarking. There are two popular types of benchmarking, internal benchmarking and external benchmarking. Internal benchmarking is a process in which a company or an organization looks within itself to try and determine the best practices or methodology for conducting a particular task. Comparison of practices and programs between teams, individuals or group within an organization. Example could be regular analysis of performance against targets employee turnover ratio, sales and production achieved against target. Internal benchmarking thus is used to examine and share best practices across an organization and is carried out by comparing specific business processes between or among different teams, departments, or divisions within a company. Moving on, let's discuss what is external benchmarking. External benchmarking include comparing performance to industry, peers or across industries. It involves assessing one's own performance 
relative to industry standards or with best practices. While conducting an external benchmarking, organizations need to take decision on what activities or dimensions of the organization should be compared with others. Second, who are the organizations with whom we would like to be compared? And third, how informations on other organizations can be obtained. It is important to keep in mind that external benchmarking is a time consuming process. It also has limitations such as difficulty in obtaining relevant information. Identifying comparable organizations to benchmark is again a challenging task. Now let's discuss the benchmarking process. The first step includes identifying HR practices to be benchmarked. Generally, critical practices for organizational success are identified for benchmarking. The next step is to constitute a core team to plan and execute the benchmarking process. The third step include selecting benchmarking partners. Depending on the objective, companies known for their best practices Companies from the same or different industry, companies which are operating nationally or at the international level can be considered. The next step include collecting data from each of the benchmarking partner. After that, we go on to analyze and interpret the data. A comprehensive report based on data analysis is prepared. Based on the report, a company develops an action plan, implements and monitors progress. So with this, we come to the end of this session wherein we discussed the concept of HR audit and benchmarking. In the upcoming session, we will discuss human resource information system and HR research. Thank you and happy learning.